All right, we got a deal. Let's do the remote start and see how she sounds. Let's listen to this badass. Oh, wow. The V6 Rumble. You know, I put an exhaust on my other one. It was pretty lame. It's right there. It was pretty bummed. But here it is. We got the deal done. And even for me, I am blown away that, oh, good. It has, you know, there's a lot of things you just don't get that you think you get. And uh, here comes the sales guy. Kind of wrap it up here with him. All right, we are heading out in the brand new 2023 Jeep Gladiator. And wow, <laughs> even for me, I can't believe that I just pulled this uh, this deal off. I just can't believe that this all uh, played out the way it did. Wow. Thank you, Leesburg Dodge. Thank you there. Jake, man, Muhammad, Bobby. Thank you, guys. Going the extra mile to help the Iceman get yet another vehicle. And I'm back in the Jeep product. I like the Jeep product. I do beat it up compared to my um, Bronco. But I got to tell you what. This Mojave package in the Gladiator, this thing really is a lot smoother. And... You don't get the uh, the front uh, wheel wheel lock, or I should say the walk on the uh, the vehicle that you usually do on the shorter wheelbase uh, Wrangler. And the Rubicon package, I just really didn't know. I mean, I kind of got out of the, uh, what's interesting, I got out to the Gladiator right when the Mojave package was being brought into the market. So I never even drove one of these, but now I have one. I just can't emphasize enough. Now, you gotta do the Jeep Wave. You gotta do Jeep Wave. That's only things like yikes. But, yeah, it's just so, uh, it's just so comfortable. What a beautiful day, too. All right, I gotta go by AutoZone and get a few things. And I'm gonna get my little mirror things. Just get a little things to put on the trucky here. And wow, once again, really neat, really nice, exciting. It really is. All right, we are now in the five o'clock rush hour traffic. But well, you know what's nice? This has its own navigation. And because they took that out. I mean, a lot of these manufacturers, just like that Ford Maverick, it does not have uh, navigation. You have to put in your CarPlay. And this thing should have the CarPlay capability. I'm sure of that. But right now, you know, it's really incredible. I'm driving this thing and just in the low speeds, you know, this thing's very free-spirited. So I am really uh, very content on that. And even though anybody buys a car, we're always on the page. Like, got to have the baddest power. You know, you just, you just that's just who we are. I want, I want the, you know, the most powerful motor you can get in the vehicle. But at the end of the day, I think that most people don't even use it, that capability. When you get into towing and heavy-duty trucks, I see it. When you get into the other cars, it's always nice to have more power. But at the same time, right now, I'm just really taken back that this just really feels really good. And the truck really feels, handles really well. And, and just hear me out. If you watch my channel, I have beaten up the Jeep many days over that Bronco. As I just have felt the Bronco is just such a nice package. But I can sincerely say right now, the Gladiator Mojave... Um, package it's a very much it's a, it's a softer ride and and sincerely I mean it's it's not the Bronco I mean, there's no way you could be able to compare the Bronco Raptor to this but in some aspects it really is um, a very nice ride and you know I mean so didn't buy it for that reason you know why did I buy it right well in all sincereness it kind of this is just one of these things it kind of played out by accident it was more about the ram trx yeah so if you kind of go back and watch my channel this was more about the ram trx and me thinking i'm gonna buy a ram trx and it then got all transferred to another jeep just like that jeep grand wagoneer i test drove 
that turned into me buying my wife a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I mean, it's just weird. That's just that's just kind of how things play out, though, in my car adventures and my car addictions. I get fixated on one thing, but then at the end of the day, it's like, wow, I end up buying that thing. And I'm like, what, you know, why, how did that all play out? All right, now today would have been a really nice day to have popped off these uh, these tops right here and gone down the road and enjoyed the beautiful afternoon, but I'd have to put the uh, put them in the bags and eh, just too much work. And if anybody's following my channel, I, I cut my day down by work. I mean, literally, had I not come back in and kind of cut my work day in half, and just kind of finish things up tomorrow, there's no way this would have played out today. So I may just follow my channel. But wait a second, you said this morning you were saying, well, I got out early, so that was really one good thing. And the good thing is I got in the dealership at a respectable time, and they got all the paperwork done, and here we is right now as we venture home. Five o'clock, it's, it's just, the traffic's definitely kind of coming back here. For all these remote workers, I guess reality's back. So here we are, you know, kind of getting up the road here. And yeah, my last sevens, and believe it or not, it, it got down the road really well considering. Where I see the vehicle and the Jeeps kind of have the challenge with these V6 motors, it's the hills. Tell me the hills that you kind of really get a little taste of it being a little underpowered because the vehicle's downshifting to kind of get her up over the hill. But other, other than that, that's usually about the only time, and it, it does it, but you just can kind of feel that loss of momentum more or less. But right now, listen to this vehicle. Which is really uh, quite comfortable. And the steering, what I was saying earlier, is the steering with this longer uh, wheelbase and a softer suspension it just really seems... Look at this here, look. I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, not too shabby. Because most of my Jeeps... You're just constantly kind of going, playing ping pong. It's like my Ford F-150 Lightning truck. The word is, when you have it on that blue cruise, it plays ping pong, how it bounces from one side of the lane to the next side, which is true. Factual, the Ford Lightning blue cruise, the vehicle plays ping pong as you go down the road. It literally steers a little to the right, steers a little to the left. So is this... Oh, dang it. Forgot my gate opener. Ah, dang it. Ah, what a joke. All right, see here, kind of going over the hill. And there you go. Yeah, I was wanting to head in and slide out with my wife not noticing what's going on. But that ain't going to happen. I'm going to have to go in and get the frickin' frackin' gate opener now. Can't believe it. Just too much damn information. Too many things in the mind. But hey, we got over the hill without no problem at all. So, uh, I'm really liking my Jeep. So what's the fuel economy be on this? I don't even know. My guess is 18, 19. I mean, way, way too early in the ball game. There's 19, 20. So that's my, you know, if I get 15, 16, I'll be impressed. I guess it'd be at 16 miles a gallon. We shall find out. Now, one thing that's really noticeable on the vehicle is I've been riding around my F 150 truck. This is such like a narrower type of hood and, you know, stance. Because it is a smaller platform vehicle. So now we're here on the back roads. And how does she do, you know, absorbing the bumps, the, the rolly pulley thing? You know, that's kind of where you start to really feel the vehicle beat you up. And this road here, it's a pretty rough road. So this would not be a good road to really compare because it's just so... It's a, just a back road that has a lot of imperfections. But it eats up the bumps and all. And, yeah, just just incredible. You just have no idea how this, this deal came to be. I mean, once again, 
it comes down to the finance guy finagled this deal right at the last minute. The deal didn't go down, and it just kind of took a, you know, what, what happened is the Stellantis Financial, over the weekend, they just wouldn't, they didn't want to buy a third deal because it was, because it's such a new customer to them that I've now started doing business with Stellantis Financial with my Jeep Grand Cherokee L and my Dodge Challenger, and those deals got done very easily. This third deal, they are a little like, yeah, this is moving pretty quickly, so they really weren't excited about giving me another deal. And on top of that, that Maverick that was being traded in towards this, that had no reflection of me like shedding debt. You know, to them, there was like nothing there. It's not like I was trading a note for a note. You know, unbeknownst to them, I was paying that Maverick note, but it doesn't show up until my dad's name. So, so they really just, you know, it was kind of a very challenging decision and they just really didn't want to do the deal. And we got creative and didn't happen. So I just kind of pretty much just like, yeah, you know, but it's all right. I get it. It's not a big deal. So the Stellantis rep, I guess the area of rep that comes to dealers and kind of, you know, talks among the uh, personnel and tries to see how things are going. Well, the finance guy apparently really hammered the Stellantis rep yesterday on this deal that he was trying to get done. And apparently late yesterday... Um, he checks on his statuses of this deal and went from being red to green. <laughs> so my finance guy that just really, you know, told him his unhappiness, what's going on for the deal and how they are slow and they're looking for deals. And when it's all said and done, here you go. I mean, so here's the, here's the irony to all of it is if the Stellantis rep hadn't come by and these guys ain't coming by every day and this is where the car gods come in this is what happens to me all the time in these car deals where the car gods show up if the Stellantis rep had not shown up and he wasn't going to be around for another few weeks or a month or wherever it may be this deal never would have gone down because the, on the financial end the, the individuals that we try to override the no they wouldn't budge they wouldn't do it they wouldn't do it they just, they had conditions of this and that. And so that's why when I share these videos, I, I, I you know, I say I, I, but I'm just saying I, I share my stories because the, not the average person, this is going to be the average person. Like, yeah, they got rejected and it's over and goodbye. See you later. But then I get in with these dealers and they get to know me on such a personal level that they go the extra step and then there they go. They make an RDM sale. But in all sincereness, I, I wouldn't have had a problem with the deal not going down. And that's what I was talking about in my videos a lot, is where it's the force. It's the force that so many people get unhappy with other people's decisions. And then they try to force it down their throat to change their mind or to do something you don't want to do. And, you know, that's just in, that's not who I am. So, I mean, sincerely, I'm like, hey, I get it. The deal wasn't meant to be. And let it go. It'll be another day. It's not a big deal. It's a material thing let it go. I mean, I get all that. So, you know, at the end of the day, wow, right? <laughs> hey, what a great, just really loving this thing. I really am. I'm back in my Jeep product line. I'm back in my Dodge product line. I'm back in my Ram product line. The kid drives the heck out of that piped Ram 2500. That's like her favorite freaking vehicle. Yes, it is. The Mustang's been sitting a lot lately. For the record, that Mustang has been getting driven much at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta wonder, right? You have a separation. Didn't I have a separation. Didn't I have a sep I haven't had a video called separation yet. Not the reparation, the separation. Yeah, this is here the other day. If you listen to my morning conversations and I talk about the state of stuff, this is Waterford, Virginia. And this is a very well to do, you know, this is where the, the rich and the elitists live. And I was making a reference the other day about how this elementary school here, Waterford Elementary, that the uh, the teachers that work here witnessed some pretty uh, strange things with the parents and talking to their kids and all that language on my gladiator. But that was on his video, and it knows what I'm talking about. That's the school right there where the uh, the uniqueness of time among us and around us. Hey, I didn't wave good. 
You know, the Jeep thing, outside of these Jeeps is people usually wave to you. You just get sick of it. And there's so many Jeeps around. I don't know what that's all about, but I mean, if you think it through, I mean, so many years ago, the Jeep wasn't a dime a dozen product over the roads, but now it is. So, so many years ago, I think it was cool that you waved each other you know, because was, you were kind of the rarity on the road. But now, in this area, pfft, no way. There's a Jeep, you know, there's a gazillion Jeeps around here. And for me, it's close to 10 years, nine years. The, last, the first Jeep I bought was in 2014. And a dealer even mentioned that. The, 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 owner's, the owner's son, who is a GM with the dealer at this time, he can remember I was one of the first buyers of their Jeep Wrangler Rubicon that they had modified. That was one of the first. It was a red one, convertible, stick shift, and just a really cool, that was my first vehicle that I bought. It was a Jeep, but come to find out, the owner told me the other day, he's like, you were one of the first to buy the, the uh, Jeep that we lifted and modified and all our stuff. On this road, I don't get why this guy doesn't move it. That just blows me away. That guy who owns that property will not move that branch in the road. Not his problem, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and one thing that went on nine years ago when I was at the Jeep product, the Wrangler, I had I was very hesitant initially to buy one that had been lifted a little bit, not a big lift, and the bigger tires. I was very concerned if it was really a stable vehicle. And that's the thing about these Jeeps. Anybody knows the Jeep product, especially prior, you know, model years, it's such a narrow, you know, chassis. And it can be a short wheelbase, and the Jeeps are, can roll very easily. So I was very concerned for the well being of my daughter and me. And I just, I, it took me a little time. The electrical infrastructure, they're putting all new electric here in this back area. It's massive. Massive what they're doing back here. To upgrade the systems for the, the, the huge strain on the electric you know, system for electric cars. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it took me, I think, a week, maybe even two weeks to come to closure if I felt that that first Jeep I bought was going to be a, a good idea and be a safe vehicle. Yeah. So, X amount of Jeeps later, and here I am on my second Jeep Gladiator, 2023. So far, I've seen just, it really is, you know, free-spirited. It's, it's respectable. Very respectable. It's a true and tried mode. And even my sales guy that owns that, he has, we saw the gentleman that rode around with us on Saturday. He has a Jeep Wrangler 2022 or 2021. Uh, the 4XE, you know, he just, he, he, he's not excited about it. I mean, he, he just can't say that. He's had to be very careful because he doesn't want to ruin a deal. But deep down, he's like, he just, he doesn't like the vehicle. Wow. Yeah, you know, what's that all about, right? I mean, this thing right now is sweet. Very nice. All right. I know. I talk a lot. I'm kind of start wrapping it up here. Now, here comes a hill. Nothing radical, but we're coming the hill. And let's just see kind of how this thing does. That's, that's been my experience with this V6 Penstar motor has been the hills kind of show its real well-being if it can you know kind of does it struggle right now no nope. not at all they're very cool I'm so disappointed my parts store didn't have my little round convex mirrors I can't remember if I I think I used the last set of my wife's Jeep Grand Cherokee L just the other day when I cleaned it all up yeah so now do I yeah, I don't think I'd be working on this thing tomorrow. It's just too much too much going on in the business. F-150 Lightning truck. Actually, today, I had so much going on. I would have been coming back in. Like, huh. I would have had the anxiety range today, my F-150 Lightning. I mean, sincerely, I would have been short. I would have been short on my range back in and the shortage conversations. And what's interesting, I actually thought about just taking that Maverick and just selling outright. So I've been short one more vehicle, which that wouldn't be a bad thing in my life at this point. But yeah, here you go. Oh, and at the dealer, they did 
it did come down to what was said on Saturday to what was the deal today. Right before I signed the paperwork, I said, hey, man, I got to see his numbers again. And sure enough, they shorted me $1,000 on a trade. It's like, whoa. I was like, wait a second. You guys told me you gave me 38 for that Maverick. And they're like, no, he said 37. I'm like, no, you said 38. And they're like, no, we said, I'm like, no, no, we have, I even have the paperwork circled and that's what got the deal to go down. It was that last number. Because Coons Baltimore Ford, like four months ago, offered me like 40, 41 for it. But that was like four months ago. So I'm, my guess, Coons Baltimore Ford, would they be at 39? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I gave them a deal. Hopefully, they can sell that Maverick. And they can make some money off of it. So, that's kind of where I am with that deal because they're not idiots. They've got, they got numbers to play with, and so they know what they're playing with. But, yeah, I was shorted. And it wasn't, like, I think, per se intentional, but it's just those things where when you get in that back-end office, you better double-check the numbers because they, cause they're, you have too many people involved. You got the sales guy involved, then you got the general sales manager involved, then you got the used car guy involved, and blah, blah, blah. Then you had the owner involved. Yeah, and so it's all said and done, just too many hands in the pot and how to play out, and yeah, that's what happens. But the good news is, they took care of me. All right, close to home here. All right, we're coming back in here. You know, it's kind of interesting. As time progresses, I think people just love it to be more basic. I mean, sincerely, I bet you some of you like, you know, if that Jeep just had a hand, good old turnkey tumbler. Oh, good. The wife has the uh, shade blocked <laughs> in the house because the son's in her room. So she won't know I'm bringing this in. Yikes. Oh, my God. Here we go. Uh, you have to, so now I'm getting creative to get my property. Because I forgot the freaking gate opener. It just doesn't have a, yeah, but I was saying is you, you take this here and, and you just the technology, it just keep it simple, man. I think people more than ever just like just go back to the basics, right? All right. All right. Let's kind of do the final walk around. And so, what do we think, huh? What do we think? Of the Jeep Mojave package. I think it's pretty cool. I'm liking it. And Maverick was cool. Had my day with it. But I am done with that. And I moved on to another vehicle. And I just think this is really nice. And the mods. I just, you know as well as I do. The mods, good lord. You can do so much with this. So, uh, hey everybody. Thanks for watching my channel. And should I shine? to kind of let you see it there pretty cool accents the orange stitching orange stitching in the steering wheel accents the orange stitching there here really nice really love the color there I can get in and out of this vehicle not too bad which is still nice but I know if I put a little bigger tire it's all gonna change and then back here storage really cool your headrests goes back. It's a manual um, side mirror window. Got your uh, look at this here. I got your cup holders here, and you can go this direction too. I think. Can you go? I can't remember. Here it is, right? Can you pull it down this way? I think you can. Oh, here it is, right here. Here, look. So you can go down flat this way as well, which that's nice. So we'll do that right now. Right, there it goes. See that? So, I forgot about that feature. That's pretty cool. We got storage back here. So that's really nice. The removable top. And, you know, the roll bar. Speakers up top. That's nice. I wish the Bronco had a middle light bar. That's one thing about the Bronco. I don't think it does. So that's really cool. It's not a painted top, but it's just more money. And the molded painted fender flares. Doesn't know it has a regular old gas cap. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? So roll up tiny cover. And oh that's nice. So the the bed has a you know easy 
so it doesn't drop real hard. I want to do a bed rug. And does this have a power supply right here? Does not. So, and then this here, I wonder how this, I don't even know how, oh, it's right here. You do it here? I don't even know. There it is. Okay, look at that. Okay, so that's pretty cool, isn't it? As you roll it up. Yeah, so, which that's okay. I really like my roll up ones on my F-150s and all. Yes, all right, everybody. Square, the square lights on that earlier. All the Jeep, you know, accents. It has the tow package, which that's really nice. Rear view camera. No adaptive cruise, but here's the thing. The truck, for me, um, it was a $63,000 truck. Let's do that real quick, you know, as, you, as my YouTube channel people. Let's look at the, uh, the, the, the price so we know together how much this vehicle was. So 19 is the... So 63,820, and I got it for basically 53,820 because they took off eight grand. But then I got to give me our two grand more on my my uh, Maverick. So you know whatever you could say, yeah, whatever. So not bad. This is the uh, Sting. It's a Sting Gray clear coat. I thought it was Stealth Sting Gray clear coat. Even for me. All right, and was it out with fill stuff? Let me see some of the options here. Just so you can see, optional list here and there. So it didn't get too crazy. What's crazy though, my first Gladiator was like 62, and it had the adaptive cruise, a Rubicon package. It had you know some more features than this did, and uh, but now here with all the inflation and everything else, but that's all good. Hey everybody, hey, thanks for watching my channel. Appreciate the uh, support and comments. And what are we doing next? Stay tuned. God bless, stay safe, and talk to you in the morning.